Well, I'm really excited about the content we have for you today. Welcome to another episode of Think Like a Champion. This is a podcast dedicated to helping you win in every way and enjoy every day. And you know, every champion has a textbook, whether it's their playbook, whether it's something they go to when they need encouragement. Well, we have a textbook, Champion's Textbook, is the Bible, and I'm gonna read out of it a little bit today and encourage you and empower you with something that I believe is gonna remove the barriers and the limitations from our lives. God is a big God, he wants us to dream big, he wants us to think big, we're made in his image, we are able to create the kind of future that he promises us to have, we can create the kind of future that very few have experienced because they've, they've limited themselves by belief systems that defeat them, belief systems that are limited. So we're gonna, we're gonna break through the ceiling, break through the barriers, and I wanna talk to you about what's holding you back. What's holding you back? Listen, I realize what's going on, and I'm affected by the inflation that is happening in our country and the, the cost of gasoline and the cost of everything really has gone up. So what needs to go up with that is our faith needs to go up with whatever comes against us. Whatever opposition we face, faith will find a way. Whatever's coming against you, faith will find a way. Jesus is the way. And he told us that there's always a way. He's always the way. Whether you need a way into something that you can't get into, whether you need a way out of something that you can't get out of, whether you need a way up to something you can't seem to climb up, Jesus will give you the way. Just ask him right now, let's ask him for that. As a matter of fact, he Heavenly Father, we, we thank you that no matter what circumstances that we're facing, we are not limited by those circumstances. We are not defeated by those circumstances. In fact, we thrive in trusting you in the midst of those circumstances. Trusting you, not a bad idea, since you're the God who raised the dead. You're the God who raises the dead, and you are the God who has already given us the victory in Jesus' name. Hey, let's believe for our breakthrough together. So money is a topic that I've spent a few weeks talking about here on Think Like a Champion because we need to be empowered. We need to be empowered to make our money work for us rather than against us. You see, money is just a tool. And I'm, I'm not necessarily focusing on money today, but coming out of the last few weeks that we've been talking about it, I want to make sure you understand it. It's a tool. It's a tool for good or it's a tool for bad. We choose to make it a tool for good. It empowers us to show up in our purpose in a more powerful way. So when you don't understand the purpose of something, that's when you abuse that thing. Whether you don't, If you don't understand the purpose of uh, having children, you'll, you'll end up perhaps abusing those children. If you don't understand the purpose of your vehicle, you'll end up abusing that vehicle, turn it into a garbage can, or <laughs> some of us just throw stuff in the back. And that's not what it's for, right? It's, uh, so we won't abuse something when we understand the purpose of something. And your life has a purpose, and money has a purpose. And when you get your money in alignment with your purpose, your money starts serving you and working for you rather than you working for it and serving it, because we're not bowing down to it. We're not having any other God before our God, besides our God, right? And uh, a lot of people, though, they make money their God without bowing down to it physically or praying to it physically in their heart and in their mind, they are held captive by it, or the absence of it or the presence of it. And we need to be able to be happy and we need to be confident in God's promises in the presence of abundance of money or in the absence of abundance of money, in the presence of an abundance of lack, right? That we need to be as confident in God and as confident in ourselves when we have a lot of money as we are when we don't have a lot. And that's really the secret to life is what you believe about yourself and how you value yourself. So we're going to talk about what's holding you back today and how to think like a champion. Uh, remember, uh, we we need to realize that our belief systems are what's keeping us defeated. And what, what causes us to feel defeated is what we're believing about what's happening in our lives. When we are waiting for somebody to do something for us, when you are expecting, well, I, I thought voting for this president 
was going to change everything for the good and that's not happening. Or I thought the last president was going to change things for the good and that's not happening. Listen, we can't be waiting for a presidential election to determine our success. We can't be limited by what somebody else does, because half of the people in our country are going to be happy with whatever elections take place and half are going to be unhappy. It's always that way, no matter who gets elected. So we got to stop waiting for those kinds of things. We got to stop waiting for people to bail us out, waiting for the government to bail us out, waiting for our family to bail us out. I love what Jesus said to the disciples when they in Matthew chapter 14, when they had had all these people following them and listening to them for three days. Jesus was preaching for three days and thousands of people were with them traveling the whole time. And when they didn't have anything to feed the people with, Jesus said, you give them something to eat. They said, we don't have anything to give them to eat. And Jesus said, you give them something to eat. In other words, stop waiting for someone else to do it. Get your eyes on helping to meet the needs of others. You give them something to eat. Boy, when we shift our life and shift the focus of our life for, from eating ourselves to helping meet the needs of others. I'm not saying don't eat. I'm not saying to, you know, go on a fast for the rest of your life. I'm saying when your focus is on meeting the needs of others, you're going to find what you have. You're going to put what you have in Jesus hands and he's going to give it back to you multiplied just like he did with five loaves and two fish. I really want you to hear this, that Jesus, when they didn't know what to do, when they were looking for Jesus to do something for them, Jesus told them to do something for the people. He said, you give them something to eat. Wow. If we just shift our focus today from, oh, Lord, give me something to eat to Lord, use me to help give other people something to eat, your whole perspective of life changes and your whole attitude and belief system changes. When you start realizing that the, that the more you have, the more you can help others with, then you'll realize it's not greedy to have more. It's greedy to have greed, but it's not greedy to have more. More is a blessing because you're blessed to be a blessing. But so many people have the this negative narrative in their lives that I don't have enough. What am I going to do? How am I going to make it? And I realize that there are tough times that we are going to experience in life. But remember, tough times never last. Tough people do. You give them something to eat. Take on this as your as the purpose for your life this week. You give them something to eat. You give them something to eat like like I'm going to take it on myself to find a way to give other people something that they don't have. I'm going to find a way to find something that I possess that could be a blessing to somebody else. And when given, God will take it and multiply it just like he did in this situation with five loaves and two fish. Now, let me shift gears a little bit to focus on what's holding us back. And one of the things that really stands out to me was a miracle that Jesus did in John chapter five, because I want to make this as practical as as we can absolutely make it, because Jesus is in the he is the most practical and the most spiritual and the most miraculous person that ever lived. But he really does say some some incredibly practical things like given it'll be given to you and pray for your enemies and uh, gather together in my name. Like Jesus is super practical about how life flows and how miracles happen. And I really this this verse stands out to me when Jesus healed the man who was lame for 38 years. And there's a whole story behind that that we don't have time to get into for this particular podcast. But I want you to remember he was lame and he was at the he was he was at the pool of Bethesda in John chapter five for 38 years. And the angel would come and stir up the waters. And the first person to get in the water when the angel came to stir it up would get healed of whatever disease they had. And this guy could not get in the pool because he was lame and everybody else was in front of him. And he started making excuses and 
And Jesus said, do you want to be made well? And he said, well, I don't have anybody to put me in the water. You know, sometimes what's holding us back is that we think there's only one way something has to turn out and one way something's got to happen. So this man was conditioned for 38 years to think there's only one way to get healed, to get the, to be the first one in the in the water when the angel comes and stirs it. Think about that. For 38 years, he believed the same narrative. And it was true that the first person did get healed. But that doesn't mean that that's the only way to be healed. That was the way that he saw. But he had attached his his faith and he had attached his hope to one method. And God doesn't want us to attach our hope to one method. There's many methods to be healed. There's many methods to break out of your containment. There's many methods to succeed. There's many methods to be healed. For example, there are there's a nutritional path to healing in many cases. There's an exercise path to healing. There's a therapy path to healing. There's a medical path to healing. There's a spiritual path to healing. There's an emotional path to healing. There are a lot of paths. And if you if you limit yourself to just one, you are that's what's limiting you is that you think that that can it can only happen one way. You think that God can meet that need only in one way. And God has a million ways he can meet your needs. And some of them aren't going to be as conventional as we've been taught, because tradition gets us programmed to believe one thing. But God is so much bigger than tradition. He's so much bigger than one way. It's one way to heaven through Jesus. But there's a million ways that God can meet your needs and a million ways he can introduce people to Jesus and a million ways that he can do a miracle in your life. I'm sure there's more than a million ways because nothing's impossible for God. But I, I love what Jesus said. He, he finally just said to the man, OK, listen, just we don't have time for this excuse making. Just get up and walk. And the guy literally got up. He said, rise up and walk. And he got up and walked for the first time in 38 years. And it was a miracle. And everybody saw that it was a miracle. And the story shifts in John chapter five to something else. And then Jesus comes back to find this guy in the temple later. And that's the verse I want to share with you, because in verse 14, Jesus found this guy in the temple, which is a good, a good follow up to the miracle that he just received was he went to the temple. He went to God's house. I think sometimes when God does a miracle in our life, we come to God's house until we get our miracle and then we get our miracle and then we we bolt. <laughs> Sometimes we just disappear and we think, OK, I got what I was there for. But this guy did it the right way. He received his miracle and he wanted to go and he was found. Jesus found him in the temple. God wants to find you in the temple, you know, in the house of God with God's people. It's really a great lesson that we can learn here is that sometimes we we don't appreciate what God's done in our lives. But the the house of God is a place not just where we get our needs met, but the house of God is somewhere where we show our gratitude for what God has done in our lives. But Jesus finds this guy in the temple and he says, he says, see, you are well now. Go and sin no more so that nothing worse may happen to you. Now, I want you to think about this, because I've I've read this a thousand times and I I thought, gosh, what? What could be worse than being lame for 38? This guy was lame for 38 years. What could be worse than that? And this is what I feel like God showed me is how about being able to walk? How about this is what's worse than being lame for 38 years? How about being able to walk, but still having the same limited thinking? I'm where I'm, I'm where I'm at because of others. Nobody really helps me. I have no one to help me. No one cares about me. When you start blaming and self pity and excuse making, listen, what I'm trying to say is the one thing that was worse, he said, go and sin no more so that nothing worse happens to you. Well, what was the sin that he was talking about? It was the sin of limiting God. It was the sin of blaming others. It was the sin of making excuses. It wasn't the sin of, you know, he had a he had a, 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 
one extra beer than he that he should. <laughs> it wasn't like he had one more drink than he should have had. It wasn't because he cussed somebody out that day. The sin that Jesus is focusing on is the sin of limiting God. When we blame, when we give other people power over the outcome of our lives, we are limiting ourselves. When you blame somebody, when you put responsibility on them, you remove it from yourself and you leave yourself powerless and resentful at life. When we live in self pity, when we start, when we feel sorry for ourselves, we defeat ourselves. The only people that feel sorry for themselves are people that aren't looking up when you're looking down, when you're looking at your problem, when you're looking at what the people have done to you, then you're going to live in self pity and you're going to live in 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 sorrow all the time. And really, what is self pity? It's selfishness in disguise. It's selfishness in disguise. Self pity is feeling sorry for yourself, putting yourself down a woe is me attitude. But but look at who the focus is on so when when you have self pity, your focus is still on self. It's all about self. And we need to we need to deal a death blow to our self centeredness and our being self absorbed and self pity. It's our worst enemy when we yield to it. In fact, Helen Keller said that she said self pity is our worst enemy. And if we yield to it, we can never do anything wise in this world. We can never do anything wise in this world. Here's a woman who was blind and couldn't speak and deaf. I mean, this is an a miracle. Uh, this is a woman who refused to let anything limit her, refused to let anything stop her, refused to let anything be her ceiling. And I think I think this self pity when something bad happens in our lives is really what is keeping us limited. We say things like I can't take it any longer. This is some of the stuff Elijah said when he was running from Jezebel and <laughs> worried about whether he was going to make it. I can't take it any longer. I'm worthless. Nothing, nothing ever turns out right for me. Um, I, I do what is right and look what happens. I'm the only one who does what's right. No one ever does anything for me. Everyone else gets the breaks in life. I always end up with the bad end of the deal. Boy, what a what a contrast to the Elijah that commanded the rain to stop for three and a half years and it never rained that whole time until until Elijah said so. And I want you to see that Elijah is an example of a man who could be experiencing self pity in one moment and experiencing the power of God in another moment. And you know what the difference is? It's each of us have the power to choose which version of ourselves we're going to be, which version of ourselves are we going to be? Are you going to be the version that speaks to the that speaks to the rain, that speaks to the mountain, that speaks to the fig tree, that speaks to the circumstance you're facing? Are you going to be the one who speaks to it and takes dominion in your life? Or are you going to be the one who it speaks to you? and leaves you in bondage the rest of your life and limits you and limits God. Listen to this verse in Psalm 78, verse 41. It says, yes, they turned back and tempted God and limited the Holy One of Israel. They limited him. They limited him. God didn't say God didn't limit himself. They limited him when they complained, when they whined, when they blamed, they were limiting God. What's holding us back is our own limitations and the limits we put on God. Well, God could never do that for me or that could never happen for me. Or why would God do that for them and not do it for me? You got to you got to go after that thinking that limits you. you. You should regard life as a search and destroy mission in which in which your main target. Listen to this. Listen to this. Your main target in this search and destroy mission is the limitations that you find in your mind. You have to be searching for the limitations that are in your mind right now, and you need to search and destroy them. Search and destroy. And how do you destroy limiting beliefs? You obliterate them with powerful words. Death and life are in the power of the tongue. We got to realize how powerful we are. And when we have a wrong view of ourselves, when we have a limited view of ourselves and a limited view of God and a small view of God, like I've told people, and this is just sort of my 
shock communication style. I've told people when they said, well, I don't believe in God. I've said, you know what? Neither do I. I'm an atheist. Someone said to me once, I said, so am I. I'm an atheist. I don't believe in the God that you don't believe in either. That I don't believe in a God who's limited. I don't believe in a God who's condemning. I don't believe in a God who can't reach me. I don't believe in a God who is distant. I don't believe in that. I don't. I'm an atheist when it comes to that kind of God. But the God of the Bible, the God of love, the God who is love, that's the God I believe in. And I believe that we are limiting him when we when we put this this cap on what he can do. And it says they turned back and tempted God and they limited the holy, the holy one of Israel. One translation says they kept testing him and caused terrible pain for the holy one of Israel. If you want to give God pain, if you want to make God hurt, it's limit him. Limiting him is what hurts God. If you if you could hurt him and obviously He's 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 a big God. He can take care of himself. He's a big boy. He can he can handle himself. But my point is, is it it pains God to be limited. And we got to break out of every blame tactic that we use, every every limiting tactic of of feeling like a victim. This is what this man suffered from in John chapter five. He was truly suffering from something worse than being lame. He had a lame way of thinking, which is far worse than his lame way of walking. He had a lame way of thinking. You can't be happy in your life when you see yourself as a victim, when you feel you're under oppression, when you, you're always going to be miserable, when you view the world as something that is happening to you rather than life is happening for you. I know we're out of time in just a couple of moments here, but I I just want to encourage you that in your in this season of your life right now, this is what will break you out of containment. Refuse to let moments of failure and moments of defeat and moments of weakness. Refuse to let those moments become mindsets. Refuse to let moments become mindsets. I, I really think about all the injustice that has been done in this world, whether it's in our country or some other country. And we have to refuse to let an injustice that's been done to us become a mindset of expectation. Just because wrong was done doesn't mean we should keep expecting wrong to continue to be done. And in fact, we should start expecting that God can turn whatever's wrong and whatever we wherever we have been wronged, that God's able to turn that around. That's why we can't let moments become mindsets. There's a moment in life that you failed. There's a moment in life that you were damaged. There's a moment in life that you experienced trauma. There's a moment in life that you might have been abused. There's a moment in life where you might have really made the worst mistake of your life. Don't let that moment become your mindset. Don't let that moment become your new expectation. When something goes wrong or somebody does you wrong, don't begin to attach that experience with your future experiences. Open your mind and open your heart. You say, yeah, but this person failed me and that person failed me and this person failed me. So everyone's going to fail me. But you know, the one that will never fail you is God. He said, I will never leave you or forsake you or fail you. So move your move your expectation. The location of your expectation needs to move from the people you've been disappointed by and move it to the God who never disappoints. So refuse to let moments become mindsets, refuse to let injustice become a mindset. Fight injustice in your world but don't adopt the mindset of blaming and feeling like you're still victimized because you have power to do something about whatever you feel oppressed by. Your words have power. Start using them and then refuse to let your circumstances dictate your belief. We sometimes allow our circumstances. I'm I'm facing this very difficult time. Therefore, I believe I'm going to always face difficult times. And instead of 
letting that circumstance dictate your belief. Start deciding what you want to believe. You know, the book of Philippians is an example of this. When Paul was in prison, he wrote the book of Philippians while in prison. And the theme of the book of Philippians is a theme of gratitude. It's a theme of rejoicing. It's a theme of celebrating. It's a theme of appreciating the people in your life. It's really a thank you letter to the Philippians. And he wrote it from prison. We recently got a, a letter from somebody in prison and they said, I I was given somebody gave me a copy of your book, one of our books. I think it was called So Loved. And he said somebody gave it to me and it's it's given me a whole new lease on life. It's it's changed my life while in prison. I have to serve 25 years to life, but I'm believing that I'm going to get out and I'm going to be a member of your church. He had so been so affected by somebody caring enough to send him one of our books. And he refused to let his imprisonment determine his attitude and his belief system, even though he was sentenced to up to life in prison. He was believing that God had a purpose for him, that God had a destiny for him. We have to refuse to let our circumstances dictate what we believe. Even Paul, when he was in prison, he said, something very powerful in verse 12. He said, but I want you to know, brethren, that the things which happened to me have actually turned out for the furtherance of the gospel so that it has become evident to the whole palace guard and to all the rest that my chains are in Christ. And most of the brethren in the Lord, having become confident by my chains, are much more bold to speak the word without fear. Wow, he refused to let his circumstances dictate his beliefs. And he believed that even in prison, God was furthering his purpose through Paul's life. And many people became bolder because Paul refused to let his circumstances dictate what he believed. Won't you refuse to let your circumstances dictate what you believe? Let's not let the economy dictate that we believe in a God of abundance. We believe in a generous God. We believe in a God of provision. We believe in a God who cares enough about us that he will supply all of our needs according to his riches and glory. Let's, in fact, believe that in spite of the circumstances. Let's believe that no matter what our five physical senses tell us. Let's believe that God will provide no matter what we're facing. I want to pray for your needs right now, and I want to believe with you for supernatural provision in your life and for turnarounds in your situation. Look up and start smiling because your redemption draws near. Your deliverance draws near. Father, thank you for every person connected here to me today. And I thank you that every person on the other side of this screen will be infused with hope, infused with faith, infused with positive faith expectations, infused with confidence that you will supply, infused with assurance that you're not limited to anything that this world limits us by. You are unlimited and all things are possible to those who believe in Jesus name. Amen. Well, thanks for connecting with me on this podcast today. Make sure to subscribe to wherever you are listening, wherever you're watching. Make sure to subscribe and become a part of this family. Become a part of this champion thinking, this think like a champion family. It's an extension of our Life Changers Church family. You can get more information at lifechangerschurch.com and join me on Sunday for a powerful time of worship and a time of really celebrating God's presence in our lives and God's power in our lives and God's peace in our lives, no matter what storm we're going through. And join me in the in the fight for others. Everything we do is in this organization and ministry is to bless other people and to help other people. And I want to ask you to pay it forward. If this has blessed you, if this has encouraged you, plant a seed, give a gift, make a donation back here so that we can Get this out to more people. Go to lifechangerschurch.com slash give, lifechangerschurch.com slash give, or there's a text to give number on your screen. You can do that or a link in our comment section. So check that out as well. And I can't wait till our next podcast together. Think like a champion and I'll see you on Sunday at Life Changers Church. God bless.